Greetings everyone, the good Sir Knight here today with a review of, we're going to call it a relic. It is the American equivalent of the Japanese katana, i.e. fantastic for its time and area, but not all that great altogether. We have the well, modern take on the 1911 with an obnoxious peck box for no reason other than the fact that there's a rail down here. So, the Desert Warrior, or Ops Tactical 45 by Tokyo Motori, is a more modernized 45 that won. You know what? I'm, I can't even say it. I can't even take it seriously, so there you go. <laughs> it's on the target, and it's immensely amusing to me. So, another 1945, so the gun that people still buy and use these days, they generally do this little dance here, is more or less how it goes. But yeah, 45, so people still really, really like this, and circa, well, 1911, it was pretty good. You still have revolvers, and this gives you one more shot than a six-shooter, so... That's kind of nice. The magazine is smaller than you'd expect. A little stick mag here. And there's an inaccuracy you're going to notice right away, and that's the 1911 is notorious for being single stack. And this is, in fact, double stack. Because as opposed to the 45 1911, we're using 6mm caseless subsonic munitions, which is a fancy way to say it's air shit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Tokyo Motori, so you know the hop-up's gonna be good. Now there's a few other inconsistencies also exist in the gun, other than the 25 magazine. And that's the uh, fact that it's very hard to get this to jam. Tokyo Motori didn't really pay that much attention to the history books, so this does not jam as often as well. I'm gonna take this pack box off. It's funny, it's just a battery case, but... I'm just, uh, so the modernizing, well other than slimming this down and giving better sights to it, is you've got this little rail down here that's connected by two hexarential screws that can be removed. So if you have a traditional Safari Land holster, or you have already hate yourself enough to own a real steel version, this is probably a Blackhawk or something, but you probably are like, yeah, so you can remove this rail and get that to fit in there because they're molded Crydex and whatever. So you got your little mount here. You do have the triple safety. There's the one on the back here with the super little fishtail, so that keeps the trigger from being pulled. Once the hammer is locked, you have another safety here. I guess I should show on the side you guys are looking at. And yeah, those are both prevent you from pulling the trigger. And then you got your little latch there. Now to take this apart, you pop out this pin from back here and you remove the, uh, was it the slide catch? And then you can pull the slide off and it's pretty basic. So how does it shoot now? The tan aesthetic is real. This absolutely, although I'm, I'm going to be bashing on 1911s and Colt a lot, but the tan brown aesthetic they have, particularly the brown with the tan uh, grips here, does look very, very fantastic. And when I get my Glock 17, I'm going to have to tan it the hell up. I also like how they have the black accents, which gives you more of the uh, brown gear, black accents, sort of like Generation 1 tan gear setup, which is really cool. I like that. Single magazine release, double-sided safety, for some reason, I don't know. You do you, and yeah, any you little, like, hammer. Trigger's also got the three-pin uh, cutouts for weight reduction, and it's just a simple slide-back trigger. So kind of cool, unique in its own right. So, how does Tokyo Madri get their gun to sound? Well, you chamber it normally, like you do. And, uh, yeah, how does it sound when firing? Well, safety is our top priority. There's a poltergeist in my closet, if you heard that. Hopefully you didn't, but if you have the speakers up nice and loud, or you have fancy speakers, then uh, you probably heard it, so. Safety chin strap, safety googles, maximize your safety. And hey, guess what? We're not gonna lose a night today. So, you know, chalk that one up. And now we here authorized for shooting. Indoors, in a paper thin house. Don't do this with real guns again, by the way. No matter how many times I say, don't do this with real guns, I'm gonna get obnoxious comments. So here we go. That one doesn't shoot. You know, I'm just gonna step out here for a bit. I'm gonna put this right on the black and see what happens. As soon as I turn the safety off. Right, so our first shot threw out a ton of gas and we put our first round down in the R of World Wars. So again, that's just between the, we're barely on the 8 and above the 7, we're probably going to want to aim up at about this bottom part of the W 
on the other end, and we should be hitting black. Again, we're shooting from really close. Tokyo Motori makes fantastic hop-up, and the sights are above the barrel. Other basic science and common things. So we're going to aim a bit higher, like you do, using that uh, Kentucky windage. And, yeah, we're now in the black. So, the big thing with handguns, particularly Tokyo Motori, with them being made out of metal, is they get cooling issues. So, we're now going to test the realism of the jam and uh, mostly how much gas power we're going to lose as it cools down. Three, two, one, go. Right, so we went through 25 rounds, which is incredibly unrealistic. Magazine is empty and slide is properly locked back. So as you can see, the craftsmanship of this Tokyo Motor version is pretty impressive. Actually, you know what I mean? Lower the hammer there. It bothers me for reasons. So, that's all good. Let me take this off. So what you have is a gun that has a magazine exponentially about half the size of your standard Glock mag, because a Glock is based off the double stack 9mm, that holds the exact same 25 rounds of munition. So, if you are feeling particularly fickle with a nylon fabric case, you could probably stuff two of these per magazine pouch, so it's kind of the equivalent of a uh, submachine gun like an MP5 being able to carry two mags where you'd normally be carrying one of a 5.56. So that's a cool little feature. Outside of that, other just basic things, the grip feels fantastic. It has a very old school grip that will feel, fill you with American pride and engineering and hopefully not jam. Although if you could get a Luger back in the day, then hey, by all means. So yeah, it works fantastic, it shoots good. It are nice, and yeah, we kind of put rounds everywhere in our two world war thing. And by two world wars, I mean uh, handguns weren't terribly popular, but uh, the M1 Grand and the Thompson submachine gun were fantastic, but only in the second world war. Whereas this was about in the first world war, but it was doing a little bolt action partying and old school machine guns, and uh, they did not have ketchup gas to go with the mustard gas. That's the uh, key takeaway from World War I, you know, that thing you learn about in middle school, high school, I don't remember. Nor do I care. So, that's our review. This is a nice little piece. It's got nice little details there. Ops Tactical 45. On the other end it says Tactical 45. Nice little rail. Now there's someone screaming outside my window because that is just light in Japan. I like how the, uh, if you look closely you can see the little 6mm barrel inside the 45 caliber. So. Cool stuff, nice gun. I don't like how the ejection port is shiny, but other than that, everything else is mm. If that was just like a flat black like everything else, well, I guess it's not really flat, it's reflective, but if it was just black like everything else, this would be muy excelente, I think the cool kids say in college. So, there you go. Cool little gun, hope you liked the review. It was fun, I mostly just wanted to see how fast I can shoot it, but yeah, there you go, nice. Ooh, fancy. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you have any questions or comments, well, the magazine back end is really heavy, so there you go. Now you don't have to ask me any questions. So cheers, everyone. Stay chill, boys.